Hello, welcome to another Oracle EPM Cloud Update. Today I'll be discussing Enterprise Profitability and Cost Management, or EPCM. EPCM is Oracle's allocation engine and profitability tool. Some of the key features of this tool that I want to highlight today is EPCM's ability to provide an end-to-end -end profitability and cost analysis tool, the ability to standardize the allocation methodology, and the ability to provide reports that detail the results of allocations. Now I'm already logged into an EPCM application. Now what I'll do next is navigate to our designer where we build the rules. Once we land at the designer, the first thing we'll do is select a model. You can see here that we've already selected the allocations, I'm sorry, the actuals allocation process. From there, what I want to do is show you a pre-existing rule. So I'll expand what we refer to as rule sets, highlight a specific rule, and click the edit button. Now in here, for every rule, we have to provide a rule name and a rule sequence. Um, a sequence is simply the order of the rules in the order that they are executed. From there, we define our source, so our from for the allocation, the destination, the to for the allocation. We define a driver, and if we want to, we can define an alternate credit to our debit. Um, most of the times, clients will select to use the originating source as the credit, but you do have the ability to set the credit to an alternate location. So to review this rule, what we're doing is we are taking facilities expenses from our corporate entity and allocating them to a plethora of other entities. We are doing this based off of our driver for square feet. And in this instance, prior to the change, we were setting our credit to the original source of the data. I'll click cancel here, and next I'll show you how to build a new allocation rule. This is one of the key highlights of PCM, in my opinion, as to create a new rule, you do not need to know any sort of scripting language. So once again, we would define a rule name, define the sequence, eventually we would enable this or turn it on, and then we would go ahead and define once again our source, our destination, our driver, and if we wanted to, an alternate offset. In order to define our source, or for any part of this rule, all we have to do is click and point. So if I happen to know which entity I want to use to define my source, I can simply start to type it in and it will appear. If I don't happen to know how to type out the exact name of a specific member, you can click this magnifying glass button, which will open up a new window, and then you can start to navigate through your hierarchy of selection. From there, you can start to select any member or members that you want. So in this instance, what we're doing is selecting the corporate entity, our revenue, and we're doing a revenue share in this example. We can select a member at a parent level, and if we select a member at a parent level, it's actually selecting every single member below it. From there, we would also define an account, a driver, or we could not use a driver, and just allocate evenly across all potential destinations. And then once again, we would define our offset. For today's purposes, I'm gonna click cancel and not save this. And before I move on to any other steps, I wanna highlight the mass edit functionality in EPCM. So from here, what we can do is we've built a bunch of rules. And if we needed to change a plethora of them, we could just select each of the rules by checking the box next to it, clicking the actions button, and then deciding that we want to add a member to these rules or replace a member. If we were to add a member, we would say we want to add a member from the entity dimension. That member we are adding, once again, you can begin to type a member in or use the magnifying glass. So we've selected a member, and then we will say that we are adding this to our source. So once again, for today's purposes, I'll be clicking cancel. The next thing I want to do though, is show you the ability to validate your model. So we've gone through the process of building all of our rules. We now want to check and make sure that there are no errors. So what we can see here is we've run the model validation for our actuals allocation process, and we've gotten this list of warnings. You can see that these are warnings and not errors. 
So in these instances, it's usually related to performance that could be improved with their recommendation, but technically nothing is broken here. So what we see here is that a specific uh, function is not being used in our custom type rules. Today we uh, displayed an allocation type rule. And down here we can also see other warnings such as using an upper level member or using a calculated member. Um, these are not best practices. They can be a hindrance upon performance, but they are not a risk to impacting your results. So what we'll go ahead and do past this, once we've uh, accepted these warnings or addressed them, we'll go ahead and we will run the rules. So we go to calculation control. We're going to run this for this selected point of view, point of view being the combination of years, period, scenario, inversion. Today we're running this for FY22 January actual data in a working version. We will click calculate model. We do have this model selected, our actuals. First thing we do is we clear all previously run data, rerun the rule, and then optimize this data for reporting. Today we will run all of the rules, but we do have the ability to run just one rule set, one single rule, or we start from somewhere in the middle and stop at the end, or we start at the beginning and end where we've selected. But like I said, today we'll run all of the rules. So we'll go ahead and click run. Now, while that's running, I do want to go ahead and highlight another feature in here, which is the model documentation report. So if we navigate back to our designer, what we can do is go to the waterfall setup tab, make sure we still have the correct model highlighted, click the actions button, and click this model documentation report. Now I've pre-downloaded an example of this from Excel, and this is simply a report that captures all the details of every single rule that you ha have in a selected model. So today we did look at this rent and utilities reassignment rule, so we'll go ahead and click this hyperlink. And this will take us to this rule and we can start to see exactly what is going on in this rule. We can see that what we're doing is we are taking our facilities expense from our corporate entity and allocating it out to all of these entities based on this driver. This is a great tool if you ever need to provide documentation to anyone within your company, uh, external to your company, such as auditors. Um, and this feature is completely out of the box. So now that we've reviewed this, let's go back to the application. We'll go ahead and go over to our jobs console and check in on the status of this job. So you can see that we just ran every single rule for FY22 January actual working. And the whole process finished in about one minute. So what we'll go ahead and do now is look at some reporting options. So what you can see here is a setup of the rules that we just ran. So once again, January FY22 actual and working. For every other member, I've selected the highest possible member, so the total members. Then I've drilled into what we call the balance dimension and the rule dimension. So the rule dimension is simply one member per every single rule that you have in your model. And the balance dimension shows you any sort of activity that occurs. We have our starting data, we have our allocation in and out, our net change, and then our current balance. So we'll go ahead, we will click refresh on this. You can now see that we have results to share. So if we go back and look at this rent and utilities reassignment, we can see that based on this rule, this amount was allocated out, and this amount was allocated in. So it is in balance. What I'd like to do now is use some of this smart view capability and drill into this rule specifically. So I'll keep only this one single rule. Then I'll start to drill in on my entity hierarchy. And you can start to see where these balances are derived from. So you can see that the corporate entity allocated out the total amount that was allocated out. And then you can start to see what was allocated in to each of these other entities. Once again, you can see that this sum does aggregate up to our total allocated in value. Um, this type of view of the details of allocations are very important 
to any one of your entity or department leadership. They are always interested in understanding why and how any dollars are allocated to and from their departments. Now, another feature, not only is PCM great for your cost analysis, but it's also great for profitability. So what I've done here is I've set up the product dimension down the rows of column A. And once again, my activity, which is really captured in the balance dimension, is down uh, row two. And we'll go ahead and refresh this to see the results. So from here, what we can see is for this specific product, our standard cruiser, because in this example application, we are building bike parts. We have different types of bikes, different types of bike parts, et cetera. You can see that for the standard cruiser, we have had to allocate in certain expenses. From our total marketing budget, we've determined that around $457,000 of the marketing expenses should be allocated to this product. The same goes for all of these other expense activities. With that, I'll conclude today's presentation and thank you guys for attending.